Hi YouTubers, how are you? I hope you're all well. I'm just putting this down on the counter. It's what I used to switch that on with. <laughs> I haven't got anything flashy and I'm not very good at editing. So I thought I'd do a, a, a vlog. If you hear a meowing in the background, that's because my cat Jess, who is down here, it has it's been poorly for the last few days and she is taking it upon herself to tell the world how poorly she is and so she meows a lot so i'm hoping she'll be quiet through this won't you jess and she'll be a good girl all right basically i wanted to do a vlog about my thoughts on jeremy corbyn and the labor party now i have no idea if this is going to be if i can condense this down to a short vlog or whether it's going to be a long vlog but we're 50 seconds in so here we go <clears throat> basically jeremy corbyn has been elected twice as leader of the labor party in the uk because there are different factions in the labor party those in momentum and the membership of the Labour Party who support Jeremy Corbyn and the core body of the Parliamentary Party who are on the whole the remains of Ed Miliband's, Gordon Brown and Tony Blair's administrations. Well, I don't know Ed Miliband's administration, he never made it. But Gordon Brown and, Dave, and uh, Tony Blair's administrations. And they are centrists. That's what the Labour Party became during De Tony Blair's control and uh, Gordon Brown. It became a centrist party. And politics in the UK as well as in America shifted from the centre further to the right. So Jeremy Corbyn is seen by the bulk of the Labour Party, the, the Parliamentary Party, as a bit of a socialist in the extreme sense of the word, the Marxist sense of the word. Oh my God, I'm not even... No, the whisper of Trotsky here, Stephen. And... It's, it's divided the party so that you get this backfighting all the time and you get this call about anti-Semitism and, and stuff like this. That is the leftovers of the Blairite parts of the party. Now, I'm going to say this straight out so we don't start mincing words and going off on tangents and making this vlog go on for half an hour. Jeremy Corbyn is not an anti-Semite. There may be members who hold anti-Semitic opinion in the party, but I know for a fact there are members of the Conservative Party that hold anti-Semitic opinions. And I know for a fact there are anti-Semitic people in the Liberal Democratic Party in the membership. That doesn't mean that the representatives of that party who represent the party to the public or who espouse its true core values in those parties are anti-Semitic. It just means that there are individual members who you could probably count on your fingers and toes who are anti-Semitic. Every party has them. Every organisation has them. I don't... I have no friends who are, but I did know somebody who was when I was in, involved in politics actively uh, from a different party. Now, the anti-Semitism is used against Jeremy Corbyn because he doesn't like the right, extreme right-wing government of Israel, which is extremely right-wing and a bit waristic. I mean, they want to bomb the hell out of Iran. That's pretty waristic. I, I think Iran would like to bomb them although that was the last president who said that i don't think the 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 current leader wants to bomb israel who knows what their private opinions are but we can see from the fact that the israeli government in israel is a bit <sighs> nasty but that doesn't mean you hate all jews now i don't like the Israeli government, but I have a bit of a kick in the fight. I have in-laws who are Jewish, and I also, not on my side, my brother's, my sister-in-law's family, and on my brother's wife. And I also have a number of friends who are Jewish, and I also tried to convert to Judaism in my long path of discovery over the years. I once tried to convert to Judaism. 
Uh, I'm not going to go into it now, but that's what I try to do. So I get why people feel the way they do, but at the end of the day, it's not anti-Semitism to hate the Israeli government because they are a bunch of assholes, really. I mean, if you actually sit down and look at what they do and the politics they espouse, it's, it's not very nice. It's not very nice. At the end of the day, you can label Jeremy Corbyn anti-Semitic, but you're only using it to kick him because you don't want him to be prime minister. So if you do it from your own party, you want him to leave the leadership and they want another centrist in there. Because whereas the Tories have moved to the right, further away to the right, and Labour has shifted into the centre but is now pulling to the left because its membership is pulling to the left, the everybody in po politics likes to talk as the centre ground as the moderate ground the the place to be but as i as i've explained it shifted politics to the right because everything's gone on to the centre and then moved right so you could say that a lot of politics in america has shifted so if you looked back in policies now you could take dwight d eisenhower the president of the united states in the 50s and early 60s to, uh, until 61 um, basically he would be seen as a moderate democrat now not a republican that's how far politics has shifted that's how far it has shifted he would be seen as a moderate Repu democrat not a remote moderate republican because uh, even though he was a republican president his politics have shifted so much JFK would be considered in the Democratic Party to be virtually socialist to some degree with some of his politics. That's a bit of a mindfuck. In this country, our politics is so shifted that Jeremy Corbyn is seen as a radical politician because he wants to shift that politics to the left. But as I say, in this country, in America, everything has gone on to the centre ground. And so now everybody in the world, in the Western world, is spreading to the extremes of politics to get their fill, to get their opinions heard, to get their viewpoints heard. You can see how a Jeremy Corbyn can be a threat when the establishment tends to come down on the side of the right for law and order and stability, whereas the left is left to go. I also put it to a friend of mine like this. With the left wing, it's like um, fascism f succeeds first, then it is seen to be corrupted and barren. It is fought, it is beaten, and it, because it's horrific. It's fought, it is beaten, and then socialism comes in its way and flourishes you see that in the welfare state in this country in Attlee's government and so on and so forth and then Roosevelt after with the New Deal and then Truman continuing that sort of legacy after the Second World War and then that's why you see Eisenhower as a, a moderate Democrat now because of the policies he instigated in that period and also getting out of the Korean War I don't see Jeremy Corbyn as an anti-Semite because he doesn't sound like an anti-Semite and he has fought racism all his life. I've been in, I've studied politics and I've been in politics since I was 13, so back in 1989 I was first politically active. And I've seen his career as he sat on the back benches and I don't see him as an anti-Semite. There's nothing about him that says he's anti-Semitic, but this this is persists and it persists because it's a way of deflecting people's attention and blackening his name. The more mud you stick at someone, whee, the more it's going to stick on them. It doesn't matter. So that's what the powers that be doing with the integrity initiative that's going on at the moment. I point you in the direction of Gordon Dimmock's vlogs. I don't know if I'll have them up around here. I don't know how to do that on my channel, put posts up and stuff. I, I There's a lot I need to learn. But uh, <clears throat> I point you to Gordon Dimmock's vlogs where he talks about um, the Integrity Initiative. It's basically a psyop by the security forces to discredit American, European political leaders who are of a left-wing persuasion to discredit them. And if they're peace activists. 
to discredit them, undermine them, and to throw mud at them and see what sticks. The Labour Party needs to get it shit together, basically, because it cannot continue to fractionalise and fight, and there cannot be continues to be this divide between the membership on the one hand and the part pol the the parliamentary party on the other hand. This divide between the two parties, the two wings of 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 the same party, is not. It's not helping anything because at the end of the day, what's it going to achieve? It's going to achieve nothing in the sense that whoever stands on a socialist left-wing platform like Jeremy Corbyn did when he stood the last two times for the leadership, if if somebody else comes along and stands on that platform or if a number of people come along and stand on that platform, <coughs> excuse me, stand on that platform, that the party membership will vote for that socialist candidate and the centrist politics of the parliamentary party will not win through again unless the parliamentary party tries to launch some sort of soft coup and change the electoral process of the Labour Party, which I think will be a bloody scandal. There needs to be a shift in the ideas of thinking in politics and the Labour Party is showing this. The youth, and when I say the youth, I mean people under, if you look at it, people mainly under the age of 45, 35, to 18, to 16. These people are coming out with very radical left-wing views. They're embracing a left-wing politics, which a lot of people thought had died in the 80s and Thatcher had buried. And I, I'm finding that they they are more driven to get onto the streets and activate in, and get involved in activities and politics than the older generation are. The older generation who voted for Brexit. It's, it's, I mean, it, it's not going to be long until the demographic shifts so that the millennials and the generation just below that and the generations just above that. My, my generation, I'm, I'm 43 this year. I'm 42 at the moment, I'm 43 this year. So, it's people my age and lower than me are thinking in 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 a slightly more radical sense of the a sense of in the ideas in politics and i i see the demographic as i'm trying to explain and I get my tongue out of my mouth um the demographic in in the electoral college in our electoral system is shifting so that the boomers who predominantly vote tory and get the tories in every time are either dying off or whatever happens with Brexit may come out and never vote again, as I'm saying, or uh, we're dying off. Um, the millennials and the generations either side of that are coming of age and coming of voting age and are now embracing politicians like Jeremy Corbyn or in America like Bernie Sanders or Tulsi Gabbard or, or in, to some degree Elizabeth Warren. <coughs> Excuse me, I've had a cold. And basically, they are going to become the predominant voters. And if they do that, this idea that politics in the past shifts to the centre is going to change because that centre ground is going to be left behind as people are attracted to the, uh, to the left of centre and the far left. More well, not the extreme left, but the moderate social democrats, socialist, so democratic socialists. People like that, they're gravitating towards that side of, of the left-wing spectrum. And that's going to radically change the face of Parliament. And it'll change the face of the Labour Party. And depending on how Brexit goes, it may be the death knell of the Tory party. It may not be. They've survived 200 years, over 200 years now. They may go on for another 200 years in some form or another whether they are a governing party or an opposition party or a small party like the Liberal Democrats, they may go on for another 200 years in some form or another. But politics is shifting, the demographic is moving. And I think we need to consider in this country what the shape of our politics is going to be like. And I think people who are the leftovers of the Blairites and the Gordonites in in the in the Labour Party need to seriously consider their position and think to themselves where will this party be in 10 years time 
with the uh, with the votes as they're coming in with the membership as it stands at the moment and with the demographic shifting in in elections <coughs> it is a thing that we need to <coughs> look at seriously and address i don't know how it's going to look but i have high hopes for the future but with the Labour Party, there is this disconnect between the leadership, the membership, well, not necessarily the leadership, but the membership and the parliamentary party. And they this needs to be overcome. Otherwise, the Payouts Party will just remain an opposition party, gaining lots of votes and polling high in the opinion polls. And don't let anybody tell you they're not doing well in the opinion polls. In some opinion polls, they're three to six points ahead in the lead in these opinion polls over the Conservatives if there was a general election tomorrow. So um, believe what the establishment media goes around telling you. What well, Cast your net wide. All right, I've done 16 minutes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to do more on these, just brief opinions on political stuff. I wanted to do this one on the UK Labour Party because I wanted to get one out there about the party that I tend to vote for on the whole. Um, more so now that Jeremy Corbyn's the leader, but I want to share with you my personal opinions about Jeremy Corbyn, maybe in the next vlog. Um, I might do it in the next vlog, but these are my personal opinions about him, not necessarily as a leader, but as a politician, and I'll see how that how that goes i don't know when i'll get that out i might try and do that tomorrow if i'm not doing anything yeah i might do that tomorrow so if you see me saying this and then in the next row you see a vlog above it me talking about jeremy corbyn you know i've done it <laughs> all right then folks thanks so much for watching i will catch you on the other side soon and look after yourselves and um stay warm if you're in the uk because it's going to be chilly see you later